welcome everyone. I guess it also could be good evening here in Detroit. It's just two in the afternoon. So welcome. Welcome. I see there's a lot of folks already in the chat. Uh, before I get to you all, I want to welcome Amir. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, so excited to talk to you about garden planning. Because, <laughs> thank you thank you so much for having me Audrey it's a pleasure oh uh, I think we're going to have a great chat today and, <laughs> I'm looking uh, forward to it yeah so do you think your kitty's gonna um pop in and want to she she might make an appearance yeah she's upstairs okay. at the moment but yeah okay yeah. she yeah, always they, takes a wonder so I'm sure <laughs> they have a they have a way of making themselves known don't they absolutely absolutely <laughs> okay so uh, let me just say hi to I see Mel and Pauline and Leanne. Wait a minute. I oh, there we go. I'll just go back up a little bit. I think I saw Stephen and Joe and a lot of chef is here. Pauline, Robin, so good to have you. Uh, Margaret. Yeah, nice. Thank you all for oh, being here. Hi, Stu. Yeah, it's good to see Stu as well. Oh, awesome. You've, you're even further down than I am. <laughs> I keep clicking on it and it's highlighting like I'm going to get rid of it. And uh, Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, sometimes I love computers. I shouldn't say sometimes. <laughs> I'm kind of a computer junkie, but I don't like when they do not do what I'm wanting them to do. I know. I know okay. the feeling. Yeah. So here's a here's what we're going to be chatting about today is our 2024 garden plans and it's not i don't think planning for a garden is just about what am i going to grow and where am i going to grow it uh, it's also i think about deciding the feel you want in your garden and uh things that you might want to attract or not attract and i know amir you have <laughs> a heart for nature and for inviting that into your space. So yeah. I'm wondering if you would want to talk a little bit about how you do that uh, or what your ultimate goal is as you do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I really enjoy making my garden because the wildlife was there before us, you know, so I like to share right. it, share my space with, um, with the wildlife because when I, I like to switch off from my day job as, as a lawyer, I'm really, really busy, the usual nine to five. And then in the summer evenings, I like nothing more than just spending the evening on my allotment. And, and literally, you can be there on your own doing a little bit of work, but at the same time, just appreciating all the wildlife around mm -hmm. around me. Um, I find um, this is why when I grow a lot of sunflowers on my allotment as well and um, because in the late summer evenings we get a lot of um, literally like swarms I think they call it a charm of goldfinches and they literally oh. they, they, they come down and they'll like literally fly from one sunflower over to another there's like literally there's there's dozens of them and um, I've never quite caught it on camera I'd love to do that but literally I'm just in awe I'm, I'm just literally sat there and you can see them and they'll go from one allotment plot to another and then they'll come back around and um, it's amazing to see and the chirping away so we get a lot of we get in the summer as well swallows and um, all different types of birds um, and what what I find as well is that I mean, if there's veg that I want to protect from the birds, I will obviously naturally cover it with netting. Um, but I do also find that that sometimes, to be honest, it's like they, it depends on the type of bird, really. It's usually the pigeons that like the cabbages and and they, they like some of the greens. But but then we also, to be honest, have a sparrow hawk on our a resident sparrow hawk. And literally, she will take the pigeons down. Um, and and that's happened to me on more than one occasion. I've only once ended up filming it um, where she actually caught a pigeon right in front of me. But wow. um, but yeah, so it's like you know, it's it's almost like we have our own na security as well from nature. You know, like a security <laughs> guard. <laughs> not not good for the pigeon, but she gets a meal at the end of it as well. So it's it's all a cycle, really. It really is. You can do things. 
I find as well, to be honest, I do like the French style of, of gardening where they'll mm -hmm. obviously incorporate, they'll incorporate all the flowers within mm -hmm. with the veg. And I find that sometimes, to be honest, that can also help because if you because if you've got like, you know, all your cabbages in a row, a pigeon looking at it from a bird's eye view is just it's going to be like a supermarket, really. Right. You know, they, you know they'll come down. Whereas if you interplant and you can probably naturally do some of it with flowers and plants, you might end up, to be honest, covering a lot of it and the birds just either get put off or don't spot it. So there are ways where you can do that naturally without but but I always cover what I need to and then as I mentioned earlier if I've over sown something I'll find a place on the allotment where I'll plant it just for the butterflies or, or you the know that is that is really a great idea yeah <laughs> because I think we all start those of us that start from seed all start more than we're ever going to use because yeah. you know we want to make sure we at least get what we want uh but I thought, what a great idea to kind of start, like, have a place that's just for the wildlife to enjoy. And then you're not stressing uh, yeah. about them coming over to where you'd like yeah. them to be. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you'll enjoy it, too, because it's just so nice when you see them up close. Um, it's really, honestly, and and sometimes they will start trusting you. I know we were talking earlier about yeah. the robin, the robin, but... Um, but yeah, he's trusted me enough to literally he'll land on me sometimes when I've not even realized I'm literally down digging on the floor and he'll just land on my head or something. But it's um, but it is amazing because they will start trusting you when they realize that you're not a danger to them, really. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice. Well, and I, I got to tell you, on your channel, you do such beautiful um, photography of all of the wildlife that you see. And I think it was your last video where you were actually feeding this Robin out of your hand. It might not have yeah, been your last one, but it was very recent. Yeah. yeah and right. oh my goodness, it was beautiful. Because <laughs> uh, I couldn't imagine how you would train this wild bird to do that. But uh, he or she seemed very comfortable jumping onto your hand and getting that. Uh, yeah. So it was, it was yeah. gorgeous. And yeah. I've never seen... Uh, you called it a charm of goldfinches. Yeah. Because we have a couple that come and uh, hang out, but I can't imagine a whole group of them coming in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they land on a sunflower, and the sunflower doesn't even move, does it? No, no, that's they're right. So, yeah, they're, they're so dense. They're, they're just like so, so tiny. <laughs> they are so <laughs> tiny. They're almost like a little hummingbird. So that's tiny. Right. Um, so are there things that you do uh, other than giving sacrificial cabbages or uh, are there any things that you do? Like, do you have a pond? Do you have? That's, that, that is one thing. Well, at the moment, I think um, some of our allotment site is literally like a pond because it's oh, flooded. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, I was talking, the, I think last week or was it the week before I was talking to um, Danny at the Grapevine Garden about, you know, being inspired and, and wanting a wildlife pond and what a few days later of literally half of my plot is, is underwater. <laughs> but um, like, but that wasn't that... exactly what you had in mind. But... Yeah, nature, nature's yeah. way, exactly. Right. It wasn't what I had in mind. Um, but, um, but I would like to, I think this year, definitely, that's one of my plans. I'm, I have one here in my garden at home, a small wildlife pond and it's fantastic because you get all the, the frogs and toads and newts and that in turn then seems to attract the hedgehogs as well. Okay. Because I think hedgehogs, hedgehogs are, um, they come out and they're nocturnal and I think they sometimes feed on frogs and things like that. So, so yeah, it's a whole, and, and I have it here and it's so, um, it seems to attract so much wildlife. So I'd really like to do the same on my allotment and replicate that. Just a small pond. Okay. Um, I'd like to do, I would like to do that. That is the plan this year. Um, in terms of um, anything else I do in the garden, um, the usual, I mean, I'll, I'll have bird feeders for the birds as well, um, but I again put them in an area where I know I haven't got either certain things that might get like, like because sometimes you'll get the crows or the jackdaws and they will, um, they, they will sometimes take some of your crops. So, yeah, if I move yeah. them a little bit further away um, where I want them and then sometimes I'll set up my camera nearby so I can get some some nice footage um, that that's really nice. But um, but other than that, really, to be honest, um, what I tend to do is um, 
is grow a lot of things and grow it in abundance. So I'm happy to share. Okay. <laughs> now, um, when you create a pond, uh, that you, yeah. you have to have a liner, you have to, That's is right. there upkeep to having a pond? Um, generally it's just, um, yeah, you, you just line it. I mean, I'm not, I don't really know much about it, but yeah, just, just line it and then, um, keep the lining secure and then you can cut out, cut the rest of it away. But, but then the upkeep is, I mean, you put some oxygenated plants in there and some, some pond plants, you do have to sometimes regularly sort of, um, cut some of it back or remove some of the algae that gets on top of the pond okay. um, but other than that um you will find honestly literally just add well rainwater is the best so if you can collect rainwater in butts and fill it up but once it's there you would be amazed at how quickly the wildlife seems to turn up and make itself at home um literally i think when i did it here at home within weeks we found because i suppose it's a timing you have to get your timing right but i do find that if you did it this time of the year just before spring um yeah you'll it'll start attracting the frogs um because i think some species and they come out of hibernation and then they will look for a place to settle and yeah it can happen quite quickly now do you put a uh, koi in there or any kind of fish um no that with the reason why is because I think uh, some people will have um, goldfish, but but with with goldfish or, or koi, they, they will start they, like they'll eat all the tadpoles. Oh, um, okay, so that you end up having your frogs. Purpose. Yes, that's that's right. Yeah, so for a wildlife pond, it's probably better not to have fish um, because we have a river nearby. There are some natural sort okay. of species of of fish i think stickleback and things like that which are na native so so there are fish in those type of um like rivers and and brooks yeah we do see them but um but for a wildlife pond generally it's more to attract the frogs and the newts and the toads mm -hmm. and and not to mention all the different types of insects um there are so many and and certain like, yeah, there's so much pond life. I remember at school when we would get the little net and, and go and scoop up the pond and you find there's just so much life in there. You actually realize that underwater, mm -hmm. there's so much going on. It's great. Well, and I would imagine your son enjoys having a place where there's toads and frogs. And oh, absolutely. yeah, I could see I could absolutely. see a little boy having a good time with that. Okay. Yeah, I think jo I think Joanne just mentioned in the comments that um, hedgehogs also like to swim. See, I didn't know that. Um, that that's that's very interesting. But yeah, yeah. And I like make sure there's a beach area so they can climb out. So they can climb themselves <laughs> out, that. right? Yes, yeah. I love that. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, do you also have um, like an insect house or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, little bug hotels and, and sometimes even if it's just like um, a pile of, of wood, like, like chopped right. wood, if you've chopped a tree or anything like that, even if it's just a pile of wood, um, you will find immediately you'll start drawing in the, the insects. They'll make it as a, like, a, they'll just settle in and it'll become a habitat for, for insects. It's, um, it's very easy for that to happen. I do find that sometimes when I pile the wood near to my compost bins, um, you do also find that the frogs like that because they like to sleep in it and okay. um, and take shelter in it, and as well as the the, the hedgehogs again, they they like to sort of um, find a little space and tuck themselves in. I have been a little bit worried since we had the floods. I was worried about the wildlife, so I did pop down there yesterday and made sure that all the birds were fed, put some more feed there, and um, I didn't see anything. But I do like to keep a lookout just to see that you know, because there's obviously lots of species like hedgehogs and frogs and toads i think certain species i don't know much about them but i know that some of them like to hibernate so it is a bit of a worry sometimes when the flood waters rise if they are hibernating somewhere nearby it might disturb them and they might have to sort of end up coming out of hibernation early so it's always important to keep a lookout um really um just to to see that you know when you have something which might be a little bit of a natural disaster that you know how it's just keep a lookout really how it might have affected the wildlife yeah now, do you have uh, trouble with badgers or foxes on your plot? On um, That's a really good question. Um, with foxes, I do at home in my home garden, um, but um, but not so much on, on our allotment. Um, with our allotment, um, we've... 
there's just one area where it backs onto a row of houses, but all around the rest of the allotment, it is surrounded by countryside um, and, and farmland. So we don't really, we have a lot of rabbits. Um, I think two years ago, our allotment, um, because we, it's through the parish council, two years ago, they did bunny proof, like rabbit proof, um, all our allotment sites. So we ended up having rabbit proof sort of fencing. Okay. Um, sort of installed to protect and that's been great to be honest we did end up finding I mean that was like immediate because the rabbit stopped coming yeah. in and we still see them on the outside but um, but that was great because um, it meant less work for us um, so so yeah we have rabbits quite a bit but um, foxes can jump it's only a chain linked fence really that sort of surrounds our plot so we do get foxes that will come onto the site but um, but I don't see very many compared to at home um, we have quite a few foxes and I know you mentioned earlier you find them really adorable. Oh I think they're well they're I think they're but we don't have them so it's not like uh, mm -hmm. to me they're just a beautiful animal but they're not a pest uh to a garden around here uh because yeah. we're yeah. we're really in the center of suburbia so mm -hmm. um the occasional coyote gets here from Canada but that's <laughs> yeah uh that's really about it um Foxes here, here in the UK with foxes, they they've adapted to the urban area, and I mean, especially like places like like London. Um, we recently went to visit family, and um, yeah, they, they they sometimes just sleep in the garden in open daylight. They they're very they're more brave um, in in certain built up areas because I suppose they they can adapt, and people end up feeding them sure. as well, so they get nice and comfortable. Really, sure. to be honest, um, and they are quite they're, they're quite sweet, but they do have their the, the one here that I have in my in my garden, um, I don't know whether it's a vixen or a dog fox, but um, but they regularly come in the garden and um, they they will sometimes mess everywhere, so you're having to tidy. But I don't mind that so much, really, to be honest. But um, but once I must have left a gardening glove in the garden, and I went the following day, and he'd literally chewed off he bit off all the fingers off the, <laughs> off my glove <laughs> and um and uh and that was quite funny to discover i just thought you know usually people say oh you know they they're afraid of human scent but not so yeah, much yeah and you're just glad um, your fingers really, weren't in the gloves yeah. while he was doing that yeah okay. <laughs> yeah exactly uh yeah i'm we're building um let me i'll, I'll back up the story uh you many of you uh, knew Steve from Greenside Up, and he had a bug Ben that he had built. And I, having British parents, and so I kind of have this affinity. Uh, I was like, "Oh, Kevin, we are building a bug Ben. That is the coolest thing." And when he passed, I was able to. Uh, Anne allowed me to take his bug Ben sign. So we're we're constructing a bug Ben this year uh, in oh, honor of Steve. Amazing. And the problem I have, I'm a former interior designer, so I want to make it look like a replica of, you know, Big Ben. Right. But yeah. that's not the point of this, right? The point of this is to give, you know, just like as you were talking about, just piles of wood. So piles of twigs yeah. in this part of it. And I thought, I don't want to over design this thing so i'm trying really hard to just go let it be just natural looking for the bugs and for the insects yes. and for whatever wildlife might go in there so that's turning out to be a little more of a challenge for me yeah, to just yeah. say keep it loose <laughs> keep it loose this does not have to be a replica uh, but keep it aesthetically so balance yeah yourself. i can balance it a little bit without being crazy <laughs> So I, I'm hoping that that will, and I'm thinking actually when I do that, of maybe making that the area that I'll plant my extra veg out for the wildlife yeah. to enjoy. And that's kind of like their oh, little brilliant. dining space. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that is amazing. Yeah. That would be a great idea. Yes. I'd love that. I, I'd love that. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that that's a really good way to uh, to to have them there, but not have them everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So it is. It is amazing how they adapt as well. Like um, we, I, I mean, we. I was quite fortunate to have. Um, well, I discovered it accidentally, but um, 
uh, bumblebees. I mean, you've probably seen yeah. a film a lot of them. In my, I love them. Like when you see them up close and they're all furry and cozy, they're, they're so cute. But um, but what I found this year um, was um, I was literally clearing out. There, there was a uh, we've got a really old shed at the back of our garden, which just had loads of junk in it, really. So we were clearing it out. And um, and what I found was um, as I was sort of clearing out, I was discovering quite a few bumblebees sort of like flying past me. And then we discovered that there was a but when we cleared most of it and we were just about to dismantle the shed, we discovered that they were nesting. They usually nest underground. Right. But they actually were nesting. Um, they were actually nesting on the floor of our shed of this really old shed so we had to cover it all back up close all the doors and just leave them to it and give them privacy but yeah i heard that, that, that it was such a large nest as well and um and i heard that that there could have been up to about 400 bumblebees inside that nest oh. with so you have you have the main queen and then you have all these other queens and then all these worker bees and um, they're, they're a bit like honeybees in the sense that they do create honey in their nest as well but not so much like like the sort of honeybees because that's what they do that's their main thing that they do but um but it was amazing to find honestly and they're not so they're quite docile as well so they're not as aggressive as certain like bees or wasps so right. so they they but i did sort of film them at a distance and and capture some of the filming but it was so interesting like even the sounds like you can hear them oh. like they were obviously doing their their buzzing yes. but they're humming but little pipping sounds and it was so nice like i literally had my camera right close to them and i could hear what was picking up all the different sounds what was going on it seemed like they were very busy in there but but it was amazing amazing find and yeah we kept them safe and then towards the end around autumn time that's when they yeah, they they disappeared. Yeah, okay. they moved on. Well, that's a tr naturally. That's a true nature lover, Amir. That you let them have a shed, yeah. right? <laughs> this was something that you were trying to take down, and we're like, nope, we got we got you know people living in here. We gotta we gotta give them a yeah, little a little privacy <laughs> and let them do their thing. Yeah. No, that's yeah. The the, <laughs> the the lawyer inside me wanted to, you know, evict them and get a possession order, but <laughs> but the but the nature lover inside me was really conflicted, and I was like, no, no, they because there's so much they they're really in decline here in the UK as well, uh, be so that's what we're. I mean, loads of people are really encouraged to, you know, leave like you know they call it no mo may you know leave a bit of your garden to the wildlife so that you can get all the pollinators um and really encourage the bees as well so yeah i felt that la this last summer i just felt that that was my duty um and it was in a bit honestly i felt honored really i really did because i just thought it's an amazing site and they chose my garden to to basically make a home so yeah, yeah it, it was amazing and yeah we yeah to be honest um my wife did say to me the other day, the bees went in the summer. Why is that shed still there? <laughs> uh, so so you work, don't you it. think they'll come back? Like they just, they move and that's it? <laughs> um, they, they, um, they, I think, uh, yeah, apparently if, if it's left, they sometimes it might attract another queen so they might return okay. um but but usually what happens is that they i think a few of them just die off and then they naturally move on because i think they then move on wherever the queen goes or if there's a okay. new queen that takes over she won't usually nest in the same place so she will then move on and take the rest of okay. the yeah the the, the the hot some of the, the the bees with her i think I, I don't know much about bumblebees but yeah i believe that that's what they tend to do but yeah it'll be amazing though i might sort of leave a, a space and just find out whether they'll come back to that sort of area yeah um it'll be interesting now, did they yeah. swarm like honeybees do they they do okay. yes but but on a much more smaller scale okay. um so if they were disturbed they probably would swarm and and i suppose I mean, anything, if they're really provoked, they, they might bite to try and defend sure. the nest and defend the queen. Yeah. But but they're a lot more docile than I think they were. I think they were called white tailed bumblebees when I sort of researched okay. it and Googled it. Um, and and I think that, yeah, much more docile than some of the other yeah. bumblebees because there's so many different species. Oh, yeah. But you yeah. almost want to you almost want to pet them because they're so fuzzy yeah. and cute and they make so much noise. Uh, yeah. It's like you want to have, uh, yeah, I, they all. <laughs> there have been times when I've gotten up pretty up close with my camera and I'm thinking, I just want to pet this little dude, but I'm not sure yeah. they would enjoy that. 
you know, I might get the, I yeah. might get the stinger instead of a smile. So I haven't yeah. done that much. Um, yeah, I think I just saw a comment from Angela that said, unlike honeybee colonies, bumblebee colonies do not overwinter. So instead, only newly mated queens survive oh. by hibernating in protectors. But that's really interesting. Yeah. That's another thing. See, I'm I'm learning lots, you know, with all yeah, le learning as I'm going. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. And there's another one from Pauline that's saying David Attenborough, watch out because Amir's here. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, Pauline. <laughs> well, when you were talking about the pigeon and the hawk, and I thought that's kind of like oh, yeah. a National Geographic moment. So <laughs> it's yeah. kind of true. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was caught. I think it's on one of my earlier videos. I posted it. Although what I did do was I didn't film the the, the gruesome right, parts. Right. I just sort of filmed the the hawk sort of land and then and then I just left it to it but but honestly what I was amazed about that time because I was in the greenhouse and the door was open and um and I saw two pigeons they were a pair and they were flying over like they were lit, they were very slow but they were just gently flying over and all of a sudden this from nowhere this hawk comes and just takes one of them straight down and um, and it was sad because its mate sort of landed next to it right. looked over realized that it was a hawk and then just flew away but what i was shocked about was the noise not not from the pigeons because they're really quiet but suddenly from nowhere it felt like the whole sky had turned black like there were crows and uh, jackdaws and magpies and they were all just screaming like it was so harrowing honestly their sounds um because they'd spotted this happen and they were all going mad but what I found was that um, because I was there and the, the crows could see me at the door of my greenhouse, they wouldn't land or disturb the sparrowhawk because usually what they will do is they'll mob the sparrowhawk. So they'll come down and they'll attack the hawk to try and get the hawk off the prey so they can have it because they're a bit like vultures. OK. Um, and, and that's why what usually happens, which is really amazing if you watch it, but they call it mantling um, what the the hawk did was she literally they'll open out their tail feathers and they'll open out their wings and they literally cover their prey um to make themselves also look, look bigger, bigger yeah and yeah to put them off and also to protect the the prey that they've just caught and um and yeah so this sparrow hawk she saw me as well um i say it's a she because um she was female sparrow hawks are much larger than the males so the males would usually catch the smaller birds like the sparrows okay. and the robins Whereas a female would usually take on the pigeons or even magpies and things like that. They're very strong um, and larger as well. Um, so she she saw me and she realized that the crows were not going to come down. So she just enjoyed her meal there. She literally stayed the whole time. And I was just in awe. I was literally just in shock, just looking at this bird of prey in front of me, feasting um, on what she there, there. But to be honest, they're the, quite large. Yeah. I mean, the they, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you get um yeah, I'm actually um another thing people probably don't know about me is actually I, I am a trained falconer. So Look at you. I trained Wow. <laughs> so I did I did at a young age I was fascinated by birds of prey. Um when I get I'm a bit obsessive compulsive with my hobbies. When I get into something, I Go sort of on. get really obsessed yes. with it. Um and um what I did was um yeah, I, I was I, I read this book um called it was called Kes, a Kestrel for a Knave, um, in school when I was younger as a teenager. And it's about a boy who this it's a boy who discovers a I think he discovers a kestrel nest and he ends up finding a little chick in there and he takes it home and he rears it and then he teaches himself how to fly this bird and um and i was just fascinated by it so i thought whenever i could do it i would really like to sort of um do that and i ended up yeah there, there was a local falconry school um and i ended up joining them and i did a course on it and they taught me everything about birds of prey how you can feed them and look after them and raise them and um yeah i only did it not so much for because some people use birds of prey for hunting yeah. and businesses like, you know, pest control and things like that. But I only did it because I was fascinated by them. But also I would I liked the idea at the time that I can rear a bird of prey, but let it free and let it fly and have that trust in me that it would come back. 
and um, and it did. I ended up having a my first bird of prey was a red-tailed hawk, which yes. you have in yes, you have them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We actually don't call them hawks here. We call them a buzzard. Okay. Um, because it is a type. It's a type of buzzard, naturally. But but it yeah, the red-tailed yeah. hawk. So um, that was my first ever bird of prey. Wow, those are big birds. And and she it was a female and she was really yeah big. those um, are big birds and it was it was absolutely amazing and she she would fly free so i would literally weigh her when she was the right weight take her out with me um i, I had permission to fly her on certain land um and she would go out and she would fly she would soar for 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 ages yeah. um and and they sometimes call it follow on where they she spot me so she could see me and she would just fly above me um, and I can walk for miles and this bird of prey will be there following me. Um, and then usually before I got to my car, she was on my car waiting for me. But it was amazing. But but she was my only bird of prey because then then my wife fell pregnant and I thought I'm not going to have. I, it's a lot of work. Right. Um, it's really, really hard work and you need the time. And, and so are babies. With, so exactly yeah. <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's right that's right i think that's pretty much what my wife yeah um, <laughs> yeah oh that's cute yeah. wow that's a very interesting slice falconer yeah. i love it yeah. um so um maybe you need a hawk to take out your squirrels that's very cute uh mama's oasis said maybe i need a hawk to take out my squirrels. I don't know what's going to take out my squirrels. They seem very well fed and happy and uh, have new little baby squirrels all the time. So I have oh. a feeling I'm just stuck with the squirrels. Uh, I did have a bad experience with the squirrels in my, like when I, all my tulip bulbs last year. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, they had love, pretty much all of They my love tulip bulbs. tulip bulbs. What is that? Yeah. You can have daffodils uh, right next to that. They won't touch yep. them. Yeah, they won't touch no, them, but the tulip bulbs. It's the tulip yeah, bulb, yeah. and they don't really eat them. They just pull them out, and they nip a little bit at them, and then they move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't yeah. know what that is. I, it's yeah. I I found that when I planted them, they didn't touch them for ages. It wasn't until they literally just started to emerge, mm -hmm. and that's it. When they literally, they were just going like literally like each. They, like I would come and in a day there would be like loads that would be missing or all dug out and yeah, right because you can see the, the start the starts coming up and then all of a sudden yeah. they're gone or they're laying on the top they're of the gone. dirt and yeah yeah no yeah. I I am not a fan of the squirrel yeah. uh, <laughs> okay so when we're also talking about uh our gardens for this coming year, I'm going to try to reverse engineer my garden this year. Uh, many times I just plant what I think looks good, what's going to be a great place for. But last year I got very overwhelmed sometimes with the glut of produce that was coming in. Like, yeah. And I thought, you know, I don't want to do that anymore because I don't like wasting it. I don't like I'm not doing anything with it. Uh, and I gave a lot away, obviously, but mm -hmm. uh, I want to be a little more intentional. So I'm going to start at the end and go, what do I really want? Because I do a lot of preserving yep. and I do a lot of yep. uh, meal prep with them all. But I want to make sure it's something that I can, that comes in at the quantities and the speed that I want it to come in. So I'm yeah. starting way back there this year and, what? you know, then go, okay, That's what do you have room for? And I, I wanted last year to have a lot of flowers, many more flowers than I've had. And like wow. you, my first garden was a, a potager style garden because yeah. I thought yeah. it's so beautiful. And mm -hmm. I want to get back to that a bit. And last year it didn't come off like I had hoped. No, so no. I need to plant a whole lot more flowers uh, because I don't think there's anything prettier than a beautiful like set of zinnias next to a beautiful big red oh. cabbage. I mean, Amazing. that to me is yeah. like, okay, that's, 
Yep. So beautiful. Whether I eat the cabbage or not, it's just as beautiful. Yep. Um, yeah. But yeah. obviously, that would be a nice thing to to be able to do something with. Uh, but I want to be way more intentional about that this year. Um, so that's kind of my yeah. big piece of what I'm doing that, that differently. Is, that, that is good. And I, I do agree with you. I, I think because I'm quite a foodie as well. So a lot of my food that I grow, I like to think about. I mean, my wife as well, both of us, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about what should we try? Should we try a new recipe mm -hmm. with this? I've got all this, you know, I've got all these courgettes and, and things like that. Um, but uh, even now, actually, to be honest, um, my sprouts were a little bit slower this mm -hmm. year. So I didn't have, so I had to buy them for our Christmas dinner but then after um they've started to come on and now we've got loads of sprouts um and what we're actually doing with them to be honest is um it, like like a bit like an onion bhaji or a pakora like literally you can chop sprouts um you can add spinach you can add it all to chickpea flour mm -hmm. and fry it it's not the most healthiest thing but but it is really tasty and doesn't taste like sprouts <laughs> because people will be sick of it by now but we do try to new ideas and lots of different things in order to do that but I know what you mean it is true about having that balance because it's nice in the garden where you can have enough that you need for what you would like it right. for, and then at the same time and I suppose with flowers they're a little bit more sort of forgiving really because they tend to because sometimes with veg you might have a good year for cabbages right. or a really good year for like the tomatoes Whereas I find that sometimes if you may not have a good year, but at least the flowers might come up and the color might keep you happy. Yes. You know, it's, yeah. Well, one of my goals was whenever um, people came by to visit me, they could leave with a bouquet of flowers. Cause I thought, yeah, how nice yeah. would that, you know, here's the, amazing. Here's the snippers go out and pick whatever flowers you want. And uh, that is lovely. yeah. And I was able to do that a bit but not what in my mind I thought would be happening. So I need to be a lot more intentional. I'd rather give them that than here's another zucchini. Would you like this? Uh, <laughs> because by the end of summer, we're all pretty much, nope, no more zucchini, please. Uh, got plenty. Uh, so I'm trying to balance that with what I like to preserve for the year, what I like to have on hand. I mean, nice. the thought that we go, I have a, I won't call it a root cellar because it's not, it's just a basement closet. Yeah. Um, but it's been so nice to just go down and pick up some potatoes if we want it, uh, get an onion. So I'm, yeah. I'm all about growing long lasting onions this year. Not the, not the quick ones. Um, yeah. And enjoying that we can do, cause it's just my husband and I know our kids are yeah. grown and, yeah flown the coop yeah. so to speak yeah and yeah. uh it is true and, and that's what's nice about gardening isn't it because it can grow with you so whatever right. you want to add or whatever you want to take away you can do that and that's what i love about gardening to be honest because i just find that each year i i don't i mean i plan to a certain degree so i'll obviously have the plans of what veg i want to grow what flowers i might be growing in the year but what i really like is is the whole thing where sometimes I'll think, oh, something else might look good there. I think I'm a little bit more like that here in my home garden because we have a south facing garden. Oh. So it's very, very warm. And I think, I mean, I, I, I think we might be zone 8B, I think. But, um, but I've heard a that a lot. Yes, garden. that sounds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, usually where we are. And um, and so here I, I can get away with um, with my flowers a lot more of the tender plants like the cannas i have um i have like a red velvet canna mm. and um and a black another black canna and different cannas and also i've got banana plants here so i've got like a banana tree okay uh, which is ornamental right um, but they're like beautiful an ornamental moose head. they're beautiful yeah, the leaves so, are so gorgeous beautiful. yeah 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 and i've got lots of fan palms as well which i planted as quite small and they're now quite decent sized trees um for structure um and um but i do like that that i experiment a bit more sort of ornamentally and and things to look aesthetically pleasing in my home garden whereas on my allotment i'll, I'll still take things from my home garden to my allotment and grow it there if i run out of space but um but on my allotment it's a bit more a bit of everything and each year i can take away something i don't like or add more 
Right. And that's what's amazing. Isn't it? Right. That's more of a production garden, right? The allotment. Yeah. 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 So I, being that I garden in my backyard, it's kind of both and, yeah. right? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just had a question for you and it escaped my mind because I was reading something. Uh, so do you have, oh, here's a question for you. What got you interested in gardening? That's a really good question. Um, to be honest, I think both my parents, um, when I grew up, so um, where I'm from in the UK, um, well, I was born in Birmingham, um, which is quite a large city. Um, and um, my dad, um, I mean, he came to the UK in the 1960s. Okay. So he'd been in the UK a long time um, and he came here to work in and Birmingham at the time. I mean, it, some parts of it well, used to be called like the black country because and the reason why it was called the black country was because it was so black with smog back then oh. because there were so many factories. It was really, really industrial. Um, I remember my dad. I mean, he still tells me these stories, but he was like, um, you know, it, sometimes you'd get up at, in the in the day and it would feel really dark because it was just full of smog and pollution with all the factories and so he was very much he started working there it was very industrial and then he settled in in Birmingham and got married to my mom and they settled in this area um where and we were actually the first Asian family in the area okay and um and it was so nice because everyone was like really um well it's we call it like a sort of a well, council estate um, and everyone's got like a working class background so everyone's really hard working but they but I I found that it was like one big family so everyone it was really nice like you know we never experienced any to be honest racism or anything like that what was really nice was that everyone was really welcoming and we really fitted into that community um, and honestly it was the best childhood ever because these days you know children are you know on their mobile phones or on right. their you know ipads or whatever and my childhood was pretty much outdoors the whole time like literally uh, I, I was almost a bit feral really to be honest <laughs> my parents used to be like telling me off and saying you should stay in a little bit more but literally you would go out and you would knock on your all your after school sure. knock on all your friends doors and say so and so coming out to play and we'd all be this whole group of children that would just go out and it was quite a surprisingly where we settled it used to be well it's called Borsley Green but it was a very green area um and um we would just as kids all just play and what was really funny but back then as well like people would leave their front doors open it was like it was very everyone was really welcoming and and even the dogs as well to be honest like the little street dogs like they would join all these children in in playing and they will follow along with us so if we were all playing hide and seek or something you'd find that there'd be a row of dogs sort of neighborhood dogs all following us as well and joining in um it's, it was really nice sort of upbringing but um but my dad at the bottom of our street he had an allotment okay and um so a lot of my childhood he would take literally like after school in the evenings or on the weekends we would always go off as a family all of us walk down the close Across the road into the allotment and um, we'd, my dad would grow a lot of veg and whereas my mom was very much flowers like even now she loves like, like she, in her front garden she has two really stunning magnolia trees that she planted mm -hmm. and on one side it's like a really deep purple um, magnolia and on the other side she's got this really lovely sort of pink one um i think it's susan magnolia susan i think and um they're so lovely and and she's and every year she'll get all her she she loves um her dahlias and peonies she loves peonies she has lot, lot so she's all the really big blooms and all the roses mm -hmm. she looks she really likes very colorful blooms and um and so my mom's always like flowers which i've I've got a bit of that too. I like the flowers. I think I was influenced from my mom and my dad was very much the veg yeah. garden sort of grower. So, um, and I remember like, not so much now, but um, growing up on allotments, people used to keep pigeons a lot as well. Um, yeah. You'd have like pigeon lofts in, uh, people would have like, like, so, so like people have here, like, you know, you'll have like chicken coops and things like that people would have pigeon lofts and I found because I mean I know it's really hard to come by now but the compost the um the waste from pigeons is really good for 
compost bins. It's like apparently meant to be. It's it, it gets very warm quickly. It's um, mm. it's good stuff for compost bins. So a lot of people used to keep pigeons as well on allotments. More I used to see that a lot as a child. Not so much now, okay. but but occasionally we do because I've noticed um occasionally even when I'm on the allotment you'll get a racing pigeon that would land probably familiar with allotments because it probably lives on an allotment somewhere sure. and they'll land take a break I'll usually give them a bit of water and talk to them <laughs> and <laughs> and then they'll say goodbye you know they'll fly off but yeah yeah it used to be very popular growing up well and pigeons are a really big bird I I didn't realize how big they were you know we have a lot of morning doves uh in the yard and then a pigeon I and mean, I keep thinking and this was years ago is that a pigeon or is that a dove and then a pigeon yeah. will fly in and they're twice the size <laughs> I'm like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah that's, that's right. the pigeon yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah they are they, they are yeah and um and so to be honest yeah again grow, growing up with my dad having pigeons as well on the allotments so yes. I grew up with pigeons as well um so that's probably why I'm such an animal lover and gardener because that that's what happens I mean even my son now he's he's going to be 10 this year so and cute. um so cute he reminds he reminds me of the way I was as a child like really saying oh dad I'm not interested dad I don't want to go to the allotment he's really much like that now when he was little he loved yeah. it um and um and he was in there he was in the dirt but um but now he's a bit like oh I'm not but but I was the same yeah. and then I find as he gets older it'll come round again full circle yes yeah. yeah and that's true but just our kids right when they and I, that's a, he'd be like a tweener yeah. at this point like he's yeah. just yeah that's right yeah that's right uh and then they get a little older and they realize we're smarter than they thought we were and are like yeah i'd be interested in stuff that you're interested in yeah mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Stu just mentioned in the comments that yeah, pigeon lofts are still a thing in Glasgow. Okay, um, that's that's, They're that's called nice. Yeah, they call them I love dew huts. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I love that. I'd like to. I'd like to visit some. I'd. I'd love that. I'd like to visit an allotment where where there's like sort of pigeon lofts because I just yeah, I'd, it would take me back to my childhood. Amazing. So is is that is there um, poo used like chickens? Is that yeah. okay yeah yeah pretty pretty much like yeah yeah they would add it to compost bins okay. and, and let it naturally um compost yeah. But, but yeah i think it's a really good accelerator because i think it because it gets very very hot i don't know but i don't know much about it again but i've seen okay. people do it um i've seen a few youtubers actually with their channel saying that they managed to get some pigeon um waste and, and add it to their compost bin okay so, yeah wow okay yeah, well, amazing. then the next time I see pigeons on my garage roof, I won't be as. What are you guys <laughs> doing here? <laughs> like, let the let the doves hang out. Come on, they at least make pretty sounds. Uh, so I, I'm going to ask anybody in the chat: Are you doing anything to increase uh, the nature, uh, the wildlife on your allotments or gardens this year, or are you? taking a different approach to how you're planning your garden um because i think there's more to planning a garden than just here's the space i have and here's what i'm growing in it um yeah let's see if anybody will give you a minute to now don't you find amir that you from your day job as a lawyer to being nature dude at night isn't I mean that's those are two really different worlds. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, to be honest, um, yeah, because because with what I do with my day job, I mean, like you know, giving people legal advice and talking them through their problems. I find, to be honest, what I'm finding a lot is that sometimes, um, because I cover many different areas of law as well. I mean, mainly do employment law, which can be quite stressful for people, you know, going through problems at work. But um, but sometimes I'll deal with people that, you know, have um, family law problems and, you know, going through, you know, divorces or separations. And, and I'm finding a lot, to be honest, that sometimes I'm talking to people and I'm giving them legal advice, but I'm finding that, to be honest, really, you need a counsellor because you find that it's 
it's really distressing and you know and and it really does affect people's mental health sure. um and and i find that sometimes like you know I'll, I'll ask them a few questions that you know you might need some support or intervention but also ask them you know what do you do as a hobby or do you garden because it's so good for your mental health yes that i find that and and that's why i think even for me it's a stress reliever because it's my green space where i can literally switch off and wind down and do something that's the complete opposite with what I've been yeah. doing in the day. Um, and to be honest, it was actually one of my own clients that mentioned you should get an allotment because I think he was leaving and towards the end of the conversation, I was I, I must have mentioned, you know, my childhood and, and um, he mentioned he had an allotment. He was actually going off to his allotment plot to feed his chickens. And he said, you should get an allotment. And that's when I thought, do you know, what? I'm going to put my name down on a waiting yeah. list. It literally was that conversation. And I thought, it took me back to my childhood and I thought, yeah, why not? Um, so, so yeah, so it's even through my job, I ended up where I am now. Um, and I love it. I really do. I, I find, I recommend it to anyone really. I mean, even if it's just like, you know, it doesn't have to be an allotment or a big space. It could just be a garden or even a balcony. Right. And it's just amazing with what you can do in that small space. Or even if you don't have a, an outdoor space, you can still have house plants, which I love as well, and get really carried away with the house plants. Um, I, I find that um, I'm doing that a lot with family members. Like I'll buy them a house plant as a gift, and it's almost like a starting point. And then they suddenly start buying house plants and really getting into yes, it and so, enjoying it. And <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. No, I don't know what I would do without a garden. Yeah. I yeah. I do yeah. not. Uh, I love to look at it. I even love it as I'm looking at it right now. It's gray and the grass is half dead and half green. I mean, it's not the prettiest garden in the it, at the moment, but my butterfly bush is still out there looking beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. it's like hope for tomorrow. That's yeah. how I look at the garden. It's like you plant a seed, you're counting on tomorrow happening. Uh, and I think for all of us, um, uh, I think the world right now is generally a yeah. bit crazy and yeah. very yeah. stressful. And I think just Absolutely. to take a minute and enjoy, you know, smell the roses, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. even if you don't get out of the garden, what you were hoping for, uh, in yeah. a, in a take, uh, you yeah. were there and it was wonderful and you got your hands in the dirt and yeah 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 absolutely audrey I, I agree with you but sometimes it's that it's that hope isn't it really it might not fruit or it might not flower exactly but you've planted it and you're just waiting in a, and that that little bit of hope or that little bit of you know you start something or you'll or you might sow something and completely forget about it and then suddenly it will you know surprise you um and um and it's just that that to be honest takes you away from the stresses or the worry and just yeah just takes you somewhere temporarily um i do find that a lot with people that might be going through you know bereavements yeah and and, and losses is that that honestly I, I found that like a few years ago during covid I, I lost my sister and um and it was to cancer it wasn't covid but 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 that was like yeah my garden was my escape straight sure. away because it was covid and i couldn't go anywhere else and i found that that was my coping mechanism i'll just go outside and just get lost in the garden mm -hmm. somewhere doing something and it does it just takes you away from the worry the or weight the of life the upset, i mean know? it just yeah, it absolutely. weighs heavily uh and absolutely. these little seeds come with everything they need in that little yeah. seed yeah. and absolutely. so as much as we go yeah i grew that i'm like no i really planted that seed and i kind of nurtured it a little bit it kind of did the hot heavy lifting i didn't yeah. <laughs> uh and yeah. i love that because that yeah. is yeah. that's freeing too. That all I'm doing is giving you a little help to get in the ground, and you're gonna do your thing. Uh, yeah. And I love when I get volunteers of plants yes. that I've yeah. grown yeah. years before or whatever, and I think, well, that either came out of a bird do, or the yeah. plant, the seed was yeah. just down there. Uh, but I love that. Like we're gonna find it's a way amazing, to still it? grow even if yeah. you don't want me to be in this exact spot, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna hang out here. 100%, yeah. And sometimes even like, sometimes, you know, people might have, you know, their physical limitations or, you know, disabilities or anything that might not, you know, 
mean that they can do the whole thing but sometimes just that sowing seeds even if it's inside the house with a tray a little bit of soil and you're sowing it's so therapeutic sowing in cells oh that just just that little bit of movement I, I know a guy there's a guy in our allotment who has the most immaculate allotment plot um which is beautiful and yet he he doesn't like weeding at all so he pays someone to come in and literally take out all his weeds um but he will sow the seeds at home mm -hmm. and then that's his thing and he really enjoys that and then he'll do the he'll he'll bring it in sometimes he'll plant a few or, or or he'll have someone that will help him plant and sometimes you know i will even step in and help him but um but yeah but it's just that there are certain stages that gives him that satisfaction right you know and it's it's just amazing so you can so anyone can do it really to be honest because i just find that that it's it's literally it's just that i think some people really find that they're, they're so excited at this time of year because you're sewing in those cells and sure. that is the therapy you know it's so therapeutic and they love it, it is. and so do i but i just get carried away and start sewing things that are just not ready to be sewn yet Ooh. but but we all do yeah it. that i i didn't sew onions on boxing day for that very reason yeah. Because for me, you guys are much more temperate. Uh, yeah. In the whole, you're yeah. an eight yeah. B. I'm a six B. So we're way colder than you are. So I can't quite do everything as early um, as you can. Uh, but on your your comment there about disability, and I think any people that have followed my channel for a while know I have MS, and I have very limited mobility, and right. so I have someone who works with me, uh, she's, yeah. I don't want to call her our employee, but you know, she's paid to be here. And I do sew most of my stuff. Uh, and on days that are bad, she does for me, but it's still the process of being part of the garden. 100%. And I, so yeah, I want to say to anybody who might be listening, yeah. just because you can't do what you once did. I mean, I used yeah. to plant them, care for them, weed them, harvest them. I can't do all of yeah. that now, yeah. but I still love the garden. And yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to give that up until, no. you know, yeah. the good Lord yeah. takes me home. Like I'm, yeah. uh, so I still want to be a very active part of my garden. Yeah. And I have all this gardening in my head. And I think, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, let that go. No, no, absolutely. I mean, to be honest, like I've been watching you since, you know, even when you, you used to come on Potty Mouth and, you know, as you do occasionally come on there and you share your your knowledge and your expertise. But I totally agree with you. It's like you still get that satisfaction oh. from the start all the way to the finish. And, and that's it. It's like and that's what gardening does, which is like the biggest gift for anyone really to be honest like i just find that that the amount we all get out of gardening in our own way oh it's the, just, I, for my yeah. mental health this has been yeah. it, i would say this is probably the biggest boost to my mental health through yeah. all of this yeah. uh because i get to see all these beautiful things grow and yeah yeah, yeah. It's just a wonderful, yeah. wonderful thing. So I and, and it's nice you have this channel where you share that, you know, you sometimes there'll be little things that you say with with techniques or tips. And I think brilliant, like, you know, and we learn from you as well. It's like it's just that if you're not gardening, you're talking about it. Oh, you know, yeah. That's, that's the main thing, isn't it? Always. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. So I, I say to all of you, uh, I yeah. see that we're almost at the hour that went that flew that went super quick that flew flew <laughs> flew i want to say to all of you um enjoy planning for your garden this year and yeah. think about ways that you might be want to do it differently this year or something you just want to try uh, that's also part of the fun is learning new things trying new things <laughs> what works for me may not work for you might not work for amir and what uh, you know all of us yeah. but we can learn from yep. each other and enjoy like the beauty that's just outside our door so yeah so amir thank you so much for being here you are <laughs> you are an absolute lovely man so thank you so much and i worked thank with lawyers so for, for a very long time yep. and you're one of yeah. the kindest lawyers i've ever met so 
<laughs> these were defense attorneys, so they were a little, they had a little more of an oh, edge to them. Yeah. Uh, but however, yeah. however, uh, <laughs> you know, you are, you're just a lovely gentleman. So. Uh, no, thank you so much for having me, Audrey. Honestly, it's been a pleasure. I know I've, I've just loved it. And um, yeah. And also all the, the lovely comments from people as well. They're a lovely community. Oh, it's, it's what this is keeps me coming back. Really. I love it's it. It's the best. Yeah. And yeah. uh, so I think gardeners are just like the bomb diggity. Uh, so yeah, thank you everyone for being here. I know it's it's live, so you took time out of your day, like right now, uh, to be here, and I so appreciate that. And we will need to do this again, Amir. This was lovely. Oh, thank you. I would love to. I'm really sorry if we've not answered all of the questions or commented to everyone, but I think I got so carried away with talking about my childhood and my gardening experience which is a <laughs> what a wonderful <laughs> story and that to me is like <laughs> that's part of we love i think as people we just love to hear other people's stories like yeah, i think that yeah, we just I'd, connect I'd, with the stories of our life so uh thank you so much for sharing that really thank you so much it's been a pleasure yeah so y'all you have a great week we'll be back next week uh i have jane kelly and Claire, uh, a duo coming on, and they're both very oh, chatty. So I think this will be really fun. I think all I have to do is put out a word, let them chat. Uh, so it'll be a lot of fun. So, all right, now you all have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye.